Uh, all right, let's get into it, Pat. Let's get into the DraftKings picks and DFS. Let's start off the 10K or uh, I'm sorry, the 9K and above range. We're going to lock in three GPP or tournament plays, a cash game favorite for 50 50s and double ups, and then a fade, a, in other words, a player to avoid in this category. Now, there aren't a lot of guys in here that I'm going to, you know, say like you should not play them. So it's hard to narrow down three. It's hard to, you know, pick three here, especially on Monday. I, so I feel like I have to say this, like, you know, depending on how accurate my predictions are of who's going to be chalk, you know, who's going to be popular and who's not, this could change. But there are only really two, two names in here that I really don't like and I probably don't see myself having any of. Um, but the rest of them are pretty solid. I think you got to go with with what you with what you what you like. Um, so I, I guess I'll start, uh, Pat. I am going to roll with. I'm going to go back to Bryson. Um, I, I, I'm going to go back to Bryson. It's shocking to me that he is $400 more than Rory McIlroy yet again. I still am having a hard time seeing that on paper. But at 11-1, which if you don't play DraftKings golf a lot, that's kind of soft pricing for the highest price guy a little bit, yeah. in the field, and I you want almost it. had to do that though with this this field. Yeah, this, this yeah. Um, I just I just want it. He's won this event before. Everything is still firing on all cylinders. Everything I, I, like I just there's no reason for me to avoid him at 11-1. If he was 11-6-7, which I think he could have fairly been priced at, um, then maybe not. But, yeah, I think you're right. With this stack of a field, it's hard to do. So I'm going to play Bryson. Um, I love Rory at 10-7 and the upside that you get there with him at 10-7. Rory McIlroy is Rory McIlroy. There's nothing that really needs to be said about that. Uh, and then, finally, I'm going to go back to the well with Xander Schauffele, who did play uh, pretty well last weekend on his way to a T-14 um, his, his greens and regulation are top 10 in this field since the restart driving distance top 10 in the field since the restart putting is top strokes game putting top 10 in the field since the restart um he he's hitting enough fairways his iron play is good he's got to chip a little chip it a little better but if he if he can um you know if he can keep dialing in with the irons he can keep doing his thing and at 9200 i love the value that xander presents now uh, Xander was one of those names I feel like is going to get a bump in ownership due to the recency bias. He was 15% owned in the Millie last week and 11% owned in the $555 single entry. If that gives you any idea in terms of ownership, I do think that's going to jump up a touch, not much because it's going to get pretty diluted in the stacked field, but I do think it goes up just a little bit. Um, I think my cash play is going to be Patrick Cantlay. I love Cantlay in any format. I do think he's going to be yet again a, a top two, three highest owned player in this field, especially considering um, that, uh, yeah, again, defending champ, $9,800, T7 last week. He's had a, got a T11 in his first event back since the restart. Cantlay's a, a lock for me. Um, and then my fade, I think the easy fade is for me is still Brooks Kepka. I faded him last week. You tried to talk me out of it. He missed the cut. He had a he had a good he had a good Friday, but this is the thing with Brooks Kefka. and this is what I said last week. He's shown a lot of inconsistency. He, he's whether it's whether it's uh, you know round to round or even tournament to tournament. There's just been a lot of inconsistency. Does he does he have winning upside? Of course he has winning upside. Like he will always be a. I think he's he's a killer. So if he's playing well, like watch. He's not afraid of anybody in the field including the, the 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 trash he's been talking to Bryson. But I, I just I don't I, I want to see more consistency. So I think to me he's the easier fade. Uh, I have another one, but I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna see what you say. So that's that's my nine K and above range. Yeah, I mean maybe Brooks needs to stop stop talking crap to you know Bryson <laughs> and yeah. do something about his own game. Um well the I'll irons, save my the irons still aren't I'll, good. I'll save my fade then since you, there's some thought that um, you don't – that I'm going to have a fade that you love. So, anyway, we'll start with this. I'm actually surprised. We have zero – besides one, we have zero of the same players in this. We have in, zero besides one. Okay. 
Okay, so that means we have one. So we have one similar play. <laughs> we have zero <laughs> besides one. Besides one. <laughs> well, uh, you'll know. Uh, anyway, forget it. Hashtag um, math. Yeah, so I'm going to start with DJ at 10-3. I think he's a great play this week. He's coming off a win at the Travelers um, where he was highly owned. He was around 20%, but he was in a lot weaker field than he's in this week. Um, but we've really seen DJ's game just come around, uh, you know, a lot more. I mean, he is, he started off the year kind of rough, but, I mean, he, he's 26 of the approach right now. He's, you know, ninth strokes game tee to green, checks the box in proximity. Um you know, he's always kind of erratic off the tee, but I don't think it's going to matter as much for him. I just – I think I think DJ is a great place, is in a great spot, right there between Rory and Kyle Morikawa. I love it at 10-3. I'd like I, – I, I'll be interested to see where his ownership is, but big fan of DJ this week, so I like him in GPPs at 10-3. Um, a guy that I thought you were going to mention, I was very surprised you didn't, for GPPs, and he was less than 10% owned last week, and that is John Rahm at 9,300. Now, look, John Rahm's game has been all over the place lately, but I think he found a little bit of something last week. His He gained 4.3 strokes on approach on in Sunday's round where he shot, shot 64 here. That is yeah. the best strokes gain approach round he has had. I only went back to the beginning of the season when I know we had the long break. But that's one of the best he's had in a long time. So yeah. I think he may have found a little bit of something on Sunday. And at 9,300, and if he's pretty low owned, I'm okay with that. He putts well on bent grass. He's 24th in the field. If you look over the last 100 rounds, putting on bent grass greens. Um, so if if I can get a you know less than 10% owned John Rahm, I'll be all about it. Um, even though he has been inconsistent. I mean, he's been – not like he started the year where he was on fire, but I like John Rahm at 9,300. So he will be another tournament play of mine. Um, before I give my other GPP, I'm going to give my cash play and I'm going with Victor Hovland at 9,500. The stats are ridiculous. I've mentioned that. I, I don't even need to say, I mean, it's like second in approach, first tee to green, six proximity. It's unreal. You know, yeah. It's just unreal. I, the only thing we do know has been, you know, kind of off is obviously his scrambling is the one thing he really does struggle with. But actually, if you look over his last uh, 12 rounds, he's 20th in the field and, and strokes gaining around the green. So he's improving there as well. I think he's a great cash play. You could play him in GPPs also. I do think his ownership is going to be high. Um, but definitely a big fan of Victor Hovland this week. Um my fade is going to be Brooks Kepka, just like you. And I, I think you turned me last week, and I just don't know. The inconsistency is just – it's just so hard to say that you can confidently play Brooks Kepka in any cash GPP or whatever. We obviously know he's got, you know, talent to, to, to – just unload on the field and 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 do really well, but I'm I'm not confident in him this week, so I'm not going to play Brooks Kepka. My other GPP play, and I don't care what people say, they can talk about the public money and all that kind of stuff that comes along with it, but freaking Tiger Woods is one of the best golfers in the world today. He was three months ago, six months ago. Tiger Woods at 9,000. I love him this week. And we haven't seen – now, look, we don't know what's going to happen because this is the first time he's come back since the pandemic. But when he was playing early in the year, we were getting pretty low ownership from him. I mean, it was around like, you know, less than 15%. So, I don't think – I think it's going to be a little bit higher this week, but I am going to play Tiger. Um, we've seen him in some of these exhibition things, and we've seen some – if you look at some of the – you know, on Twitter and whatever else – the dude's striking the ball extremely well. So I will have some Tiger Woods at 9,000 this week. And he's won this tournament five freaking times. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I mean, incredible record here at Jack's place. Um, and I don't think Tiger's one that you worry about coming off of a long gap of not playing because that's what he's been doing for like two years now. He goes long stretches without playing and then comes back and he's ready. He's not – He's not, oh, I need to have a tournament round to get in shape like we saw, you know, a lot of people have to do when the restart happened. Like, I'm not worried about that for him. I was hoping he'd bring up Tiger. Uh, he's he's another one, that, like you said, like, I don't I don't mind. Like, And I might have some of them. And I think you're right. I think he could be a little lower than people expect. Now, 
we'll talk about betting here in a little bit, but from a betting perspective, I don't know that I like betting Tiger uh, because you do always get a, a, you know, if you play him in DFS, what you, what you have to fight is the, the potential uh, over, over leverage, you know, over ownership, right? Because people want to play Tiger, but at least you're paying down for him. You're, you're only paying 9,000. So you don't have to pay a lot for him. You know, you just have to deal with potentially higher owned Tiger. In the betting market, it's he's so short because the public money always comes in that to me the odds aren't aren't what his real odds may should be. Although he's Tiger, so who knows? But I don't mind the Tiger play whatsoever. Um, and and I actually see what you. So DJ was one that I had written down. If I didn't go Bryson, I like DJ, and you you. You kind of helped me work through Rom a little bit. I had Rom last week. Rom hurt me last week. Um, even though he had a good Sunday, he still hurt me. And I was kind of ready to just kind of go, meh. But I think you kind of reminded me of how good he played on Sunday. And then looking at the strokes gained approach numbers over the last few weeks, he has been really struggling with that. And so maybe if 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 something did click, then that's good. That's really good for Rom. Um, and he was low owned last week. I mean, he, he wasn't, wasn't very, he was 11% owned in the Millie last week. I mean, I don't see that going up at all. And then you get a player like John Rahm at 10%. So that's, that's a good thing. I think that's something to look at. You look at ownership projections for DFS on Wednesday night and you look at how many of these big names up top are projected at 11, 10%, 12% or less. And those are guys I would start looking at because leverage in the field, is going to mean a lot this week. The, all these guys up top are so neck and neck. I think almost anyone here could win this thing. So in terms of DFS, that, that's going to make a big deal. Yeah. Interesting Agreed. range there with, uh, yeah, uh, with the 9K and above. All right, let's get to the 8K range. Oh, man, I, I actually <laughs> really like this range. Um we're going to pick two tournament plays, GPP plays, one cash lock and one fade. I really like this range. I could see myself having a mixture of lineups that are kind of studs and duds, a couple, you know, a couple guys, nine can above, you know, I start there, but I could also see some lineups where I, I fade that entire range and I start here with a, a more balanced approach because I really think there's some names here that can contend, can win or in good form. And I'm going to start with Daniel Berger at 8,700. The Berg got me that 70 to one payout at the Schwab. Then he finished third at the Heritage. This boy is on fire. Okay. He's on freaking fire. He checks every box needed to play here. Um, I think Berger is is a lock, and I'll I'll eat the chalk if that's what it takes, if that's what he becomes. And then I think a forgotten man is uh, because we haven't seen him in a couple weeks is Abraham Answer. I love Abe Answer at 8,500. An incredible T to green player. Since the restart, he is first in the field in strokes gained approach, eighth in greens and regulation, eighth in fairways gained, ninth in three-putt avoidance, which you're going to need to have on these undulating Nicholas Fast bent grass greens. Love Abe answer here. Uh, he's been hot since the restart. Doesn't have a great history here, but I, I, Abe answers a new player. Like this this guy, something has changed for him in the last six, six to eight months. Um, so I think he's a new player, and he's I actually – I don't actually my, think – the history is, I mean, even though it's it's not great, a T65 and a T57, for a guy like you just mentioned that's as young as he is, he made the first two cuts that he played here. He's yeah. probably learned a little bit of it from yeah. the course. So I don't even know if that's like, I mean, you could really even go off of that too much. I mean, it's not terrible. It's just that he just, he made the cut, his first two events here, and just didn't, you know, top 10 it, but. Yeah, I, I still I agree. I think he's a good play. I like him. Uh, my cash play is going to be Tony Fee now. Um, got a tremendous record at Memorial. Just shot a fifty nine with a bogey, well, wherever he was in, in uh, Utah, I believe it is. So he's obviously been practicing a little bit, playing a little bit. But I, we saw him at the Rocket Mortgage. Didn't do great. Hadn't done great really since the restart. Um, but he comes to a place at Memorial where guys that love Memorial tend to play well at Memorial. And, and he has played well at Memorial. And at 8,300, he can take advantage of these par fives. Um, I just I think Finau, he's chipping really well right now since the restart. He's actually chipping great. Uh, I think Finau is an interesting cash play. Now, a lot of people are going to are gonna want to know about tournament play for Finau, and we'll see. 
he, he's getting a lot of love, a lot of Twitter love because of his recent post where he, he posted a 206 mile an hour swing speed and a 386 yard carry on a flight scope um, where he simply took his backswing from shoulder height to like head height and it was ripping bombs uh, 386 yards. But we'll see how it goes in terms of the ownership leverage. But I like Finau. Um, I like Berger and I like answer the most in this range. Uh, I got to continue to fade Sung J M. Sums up his wires are crossed. He's he's got a short somewhere. This is his sixth event in a row. Uh, he's he's just it's just not there. So I'm not I'm not I don't I don't want to get cute. I don't want to try to play Sung J. Yeah, I mean I think you could easily just see him make the cut, but do like what he's been doing. Yeah, yeah, fifty eighth. You know. 59th or something. I mean, like that's what I think you're going to get out of him. Uh, and I just don't see a whole lot of positive to, to him. I agree. He wasn't my fade, but I do agree. Um, All right. What you got? All right. So there is some agreement here for sure. So I, I, mean, I kind of readjusted in my mind some of these plays, but I do like burger, but I had him in cash. So I actually like burger in cash at 8,700. It certainly could play him in GPPs as well, but I just think he's so solid right now. If you're looking for just that guy that you can plug in and build around, it's going to make, you know, has tremendous win upside, but also, you know, um, top 15, top 10 upside. Burger certainly fit, fits that, and you can get him at 8,700 right along that medium price range. So I like him in cash. Um, I like Ricky Fowler again this week at 8,800. I think we're steadily seeing him improve. Um, I mean, you look at his recent results, he was – you know, 22nd last week, he was 12th at the Rocket Mortgage after missing two cuts in a row But to start the season. But, I mean, I, I think it took him a little while to get in a little bit of a groove. And if you do look at his stats, they're starting to improve. You know, he's starting to get it a little bit. You know, he's 20th in scrambling. He's 28th strokes gain tee to green. He's 40th in proximity. His greens and regulation have picked up. He's 27th in this field. Whereas if you looked at that before, like at the beginning of the year when like Ricky was really struggling, he couldn't hit a freaking green to save his life. He's like me. Like he's like me. I mean, he's not like me at all, actually. But yeah. but you know how I can't hit a green and then I just scramble my ass off from there. Like that's what Ricky was doing from the beginning. But I I like Ricky at 8,800. I think he's um I think he's a good play there for tournaments. Um as far as my fade, I'm going to fade Justin Rose still. He's kind of he's he's Brooks Kepka for me in this range, and he could totally do well, and he could prove me wrong. But I just don't see him doing that. I mean, we haven't seen him playing that well lately. Now he does, and I, and I'm sure this is what you're going to mention. He has a fantastic course history here. I mean, he was 13th last year, T6 before that, second before that. But I'm I'm I just can't. I mean, he's missed his last two cuts in a row. I just I'm not a big fan of Justin Rose. Now I might look at him later in the week. He's one of those guys. Like if I look at him later in the week, and he's getting like six, seven, eight percent love on the ownership, I may throw some Rose in my lineup. But right now, as we sit here on Monday night, he will be my fade this week. I liked, by the way, and this is just kind of extra too. I did like your pick on Finau. And you know what? There is a chance that I'm going to throw some gambling down here on Jason Day in DFS after a T7 finish. He's the one guy that I would really say that looking at last week, I might play him more than I you – know, because of what he did last week with a T7 finish. We know he's a great scrambler. You know, he lives in the Ohio area now. He does extremely – he's done well on this course in the past. Um for the most part. I mean, not, you know, he missed a cut last year, but he wasn't, he was Jason Day. So I think he could, you know, he's going to get low ownership. I mean, let's see what he was last week. 3.7% owned. Now he hasn't been over his highest ownership in this whole, like, you know, since we came back from the pandemic is 8%. And that was just because it, it, like everybody forgot, like that's when Spieth was like 25% or 20% and everybody just forgot about all these think problems that everybody had but i just think that i don't know i like seeing the top 10 out of jason day and if i'm probably gonna still get them a little bit you know in that five six percent owned i, I may throw them in some lineups yeah I, I, uh, yeah okay 
Um, we did have a we did have a funny uh, uh, a funny comment about your on YouTube live about your uh, your love for Ricky Fowler. John Neighbors said, "Of course, Pat, Pat loves Ricky Fowler. Does Pat have orange Puma underwear on currently? Uh, so, answer for the people: Do you currently have orange Puma underwear? And you must tell the truth. No, and obviously, those people, whoever asked that, does not know me. <laughs> well, no, he doesn't, Pat, because you, he, 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 you're just on a podcast he listens to. So, chill, yeah. guys. He Pat has that. gotten so sensitive in his old age; you have no idea." Um, Pat, why don't you start the 7K range for us? Three tournament plays, a cash play, and a fade. All right, so I'm going to start up near the top, and I like some Mark Leishman this week at 7,800. I mean, Oof. look. Okay, so he's one I wrote down as a guy, a, a key name that pissed some people off last pissed week. a lot he, of people he, off last week was, by missing the cut. He was 12 to 15 percent owned, 12 percent in the milli, 15 percent in the 555. He missed it by six shots. Yes. So he was, you know, and he hasn't really played. To be honest, he hasn't played great lately, other than, you know, a second way back at the Arnold Palmer, which was a long time ago when you think about it. But you know, he's a little bit more of a gut play for me this week. If you look at, you know, his stats, he's a, he's a guy that I do think can can play this course well. Um, hang on. Why am I? Oh, where am I? Anyway, he's 16th in the field in strokes gain approach, 35th tee to green, 35th in proximity. He's top 20 in bogey avoidance. I, and, and if you look at his history here, it's, it's very good. Um, which, why the heck did that come off my screen? Um, wow. Wow. Sorry. Anyway, if you look at his last, he's made his last five cuts here. Hasn't finished, you know, four of those were in the top 15 with a fifth place last year, T62 the year before that, but then T15 in 2017, T11 in 16, T5 in 2015. So, I mean, the guy comes to this course and plays pretty well. He's gained thir almost 38 strokes on the field over those last five years. I think Leishman could be a good play, and I think you're definitely going to get him a lot at lower ownership with the way that well, he yeah. just absolutely yeah. killed everybody. At the, you know, and, and so fan of Leishman, I do like him. My next play, Ian Poulter at 7600. I think he's a, a just a, wow. this. I, I I like Poulter this week. Um, now he hasn't typically played this course all that much over the last few years because um, it's just not been one that's been on his rotation. But he finished T5 last week at the workday. So, I, obviously, he showed that it's not a – even though he hasn't played the Memorial itself, he can still play well on this course. Uh, you look at the stats for him. We always know he's a, a tremendous scrambler. Um, checks the box also. And, you know, I like for him, like a guy like him that can hit fairways, hit greens, blah, blah, blah. He's just kind of one of those normal – nobody really ever likes to play Poulter. So he's one of the best scramblers pretty... in the world. Easily one of the best up and down players in the world. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and it will definitely get, you know, probably pretty bad, you know, pretty low ownership for him. Um, I wrote down something else that looks very important, but I can't read my writing. Jeez, you're, culture. you're kind of a disaster tonight. Uh, yeah. Clearly the, the, the Hilton head hangover is real. Well, my computer is also frozen up in front of me. So that's... your brand new computer? You've already effed up the computer that is brand new. No, I'm not. That's that's not the one that I'm looking at. For I have a, I have another one that I look at that's over here. The other one's what's being recorded on. So anyway, um, I do like Ian Poulter this week. Here, another guy that I think that a lot of people were on right when we started back. That I'm I'm kind of liking. This is another gut play. Is Shane Lowry at 7,200. I like him this week. I think he could be a very good tournament play. Um, you look at his history here. He was 52nd in 2018, top 15 oh, in wow. 2017. Yeah. Um, I think he's just another like a low own type guy. Checks a box, strokes gain, tee to green, also proximity. I like some Shane Lowry at 7,200. Now, I'm trying to give you names, by the way, too. That I'm not going to give you Corey Connors and Adam Hadwin, who everybody's going to talk about this week. I'm uh, not going to give you, you know, Ben On and Jordan Spieth and 
Sergio Garcia. Actually, Sergio Garcia is my fade. So yeah, you love Sergio. Fade. I'll give you Sergio as my fade. Sergio is your give... fade, huh? You like yeah, Serge. He is my okay. fade this week. And I'm okay. not going to give you Joel Damon. There's a lot of guys in this 7K range of it. I think just get talked up every single week. And I'm trying okay. to find some different folks for ownership purposes. So that is why I'm giving you a guy like Lowry, who I think can play extremely well. Now, if you want a cash play, I will give you a guy that I think a lot of people are going to talk about, and that's Kevin Strillman. Guy's just been playing fantastic. I mean, and you're getting him at 7,600, checks almost every single box. His form is there. So I think that, you know, Strillman is a great cash play this week, and I don't care, probably eating a little bit of chalk there. Um, but he has great history here. He hasn't missed a cut when I'm just looking over the last five years with one, two, three, four finishes in the top 20, was fourth here last year. So I think Strillman in this range is really like the most obvious play that really jumps out at you as being a guy that I would have a hard time fading, even if ownership is a little bit high on Strillman, which I don't necessarily think it's going to be, but we'll see. I mean, I mean, I think it'll be high for this range, but there's so many names here. You're not going to have a lot of people that are like 15% owned in this range. So I think you can find think, a lot of folks that are very like under owned. Like like there's some diamonds in the rough here, which is what I'm throwing out yeah. with Lowry, I think, and Leishman. The leash call is tough, man. Dude has not been in good form at all. We're not talking about we're not talking about a flash like last week. Like he he sucked last week and the weeks before that. Um the Lowry play I can almost get behind a little more than the leash play, but all right, well, that's, that's interesting. Interesting names there. Uh, I will start. I'm going to start at the bottom of this range. I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to go with Georgia Bulldog Sepp Straka, who's been playing extremely well the last couple weeks. $7,000. I love the value that I get with Sepp. Uh, coming off a T14 at the workday, a T8 at the Rocket Mortgage the week before that. Now, Sepp takes advantage of, of par fives. He's a bomber. He's got some good distance. He checks all the boxes in you know, your tee to green uh, or, or uh, off the tee and approach play um, needs to work on the scrambling a little bit in terms of overall game, but he's putting well, he's comfortable. I think he's riding on a lot of confidence and I love the value and the cut making opportunity that SEP gives the people. Uh, then I'm going to go up to Billy Ho. He, he's, I, I like, I talked him up last week. Um, I like the way he's playing. He's got a, a solid record here. He's making the cut. Uh, you know, almost week in, week out on tour. He's a ball striking machine. He just needs some, you know, he just needs the putts to drop. But a T7 last week for Billy Ho. Uh, I just think that's a really solid player that is a cut making player with great upside at 7,500. Uh, so I like well, Billy Ho. You say cut making, but before last week, he missed two cuts in a row. Well, yeah, but he's made 15 to 20 in, in since this. I mean, yeah, I don't know. He's yeah. long term, he's a, he's a tremendous cut maker. Um, I mean, you, typically, but yes. Uh, all right, this next pick. Well, actually, let me let me save my final tournament play. I'm going to save my final final tournament play. My cash play is Paul Casey. I really like the price of 7,900 for Paul Casey. We saw him make it. You know, he's only made one start since the restart. Okay, shaking the rust off a little bit, I'm sure, but he still finished 32nd in, in that uh, in that event. Uh, at the Travelers, and gain strokes just like Paul Casey does. Tee to green in every area, just couldn't putt. But that's what Paul Casey does. So at 7900 I mean, that's a really solid price for a guy who typically we find in the mid to high eights, sometimes nines, uh, even, even, even in stronger fields, uh, just from a cut-making possibility. Now, he could drive you absolutely insane putting, but that's what you live with when you live with Paul Casey. He's going to hit a lot of greens. He's going to hit a lot of balls close. He's going to miss a lot of putts. But I think Casey at 7,900 is a name that gives you real win equity uh, and and top 10 equity in that, you know, with a cheap price. So Casey's my cash play. I also love him in tournaments. I'll play him in tournaments too. My fade is Matt Wolf. Again, it's Matt Wolf. I, I've been preaching this. The guy is too hard to predict. He's too inconsistent. This is his sixth event in a row. Now, he's a young – he's like 20. I don't even think he can drink yet. But um, this is his sixth event in a row. Did not play well last week. Um, I just – I think Matt Wolf's a no-go. So, Matt Wolf's the fade. Pat, uh, my final 
tournament play of the week is someone who also falls in the category of guys that piss people off last week. This this player, now now the, the general public didn't have a lot of them. The Millie Maker, he was only 12% owned in the Millie. But the Sharps in the $555 contest single entry on DraftKings uh, played this player at 19% and saw him uh, saw him trunk slam. Uh, he missed the cut by one, by two shots after firing a pretty abysmal opening round on Thursday and, and trying to storm back on Friday, but it didn't go so I well. Guess. He's also – hold on. He's also not played great since the restart. Uh, but statistically, he's a pretty good ball striker. And narratively, he absolutely loves Mirfield Village and the Memorial. Who is this player? Hmm. Well, I had it until you said that you that he hasn't played great from the restart because the guy I was going to say has played fairly well since the restart because I was going to say Cam Champ, who nope. heard, like was very highly owned last week and killed a lot of people. Um. So if you're saying you said he hasn't played well from the restart, he, he is not. He is not. Um. So the uh, the player because I don't want to I don't want to string this along. The no, player is Byung Hun. Oh Man. gosh, yeah, whom, on. whom I was on last week, and he definitely disappointed me. But he is on record for absolutely loving Mirfield Village. He has an impeccable record at said Mirfield Village. Um, outside of last week. Well, yeah. Outside, uh, sorry, at the Memorial. Here are his last four years at Memorial. 17th, runner-up, 25th, and 11th. He's got multiple quotes talking about how much he loves his tournament. I don't think he misses the cut here two weeks in a row, and I think he can contend if the ball striking just gets back to, like, normal. Because what, what we always see with byung Hunan is how terrible he putts. But that that's always – he's always going to putt terrible. But we since the restart, we just haven't quite seen the iron play – what it normally is. I'm, I'm believing that he's close. He fired, he was four under through the, I think the front nine on Friday, battling back to make the cut. Then he had a tough hole and then he kind of let it go and he missed the cut by two. Um, but as a result of Byung Hanan's horrible week last week, if you remember, which you, I don't even think you remember because you're not acting like you remember, but maybe you do. You and I had a bet. Byung Hanan. I, I remember the best for Champ. sure. So I have prepared here for our YouTube viewers. You're seeing this. I have ranch water. Now you can see, do you see this? This is clumpy and disgusting. That looks uh, unbelievably hard. How many bets in a row, by the way, is this that you've lost? This is at least three. I think it's four. Look at that. Do you see that? How gross that is? Uh, I, I also the, have the water in between the ranch. Just, I know it's disgusting. I also have this in case I'm about to vomit. Um, so, uh, this is courtesy. This, the ranch water bet was courtesy of our friend, Brett Swedberg, caddy for Ryan Moore said that he and his buddies like to do ranch water shots and ranch water bets. So here we go. Uh, because I'm a man of my word and I lost Byung Hun in and, uh, against camp champ, I'm going to, I'm going to take this, this ranch water shot. Whew. And uh, but despite that, I'm going to I'm going to foolishly put my faith and trust in Byung Hunan once more after he pissed a lot of people off, and hopefully I get him at, at ownership. I'm already starting to kind of gag a little bit. Let me I, aim I'm this way because I don't want a projectile on my laptop, or we're all going to be screwed. <clears throat> I love ranch. I, I like ranch too. So like this may be better than you think. I, I'm seriously like in a. Cl I'm like I just broke out into a sweat. I wasn't even thinking about it until I just picked it up. And now my palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. You know what I mean? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh my god! Oh no! This could be a. <clears throat> We're down. We're okay, down. good. Uh, good job, DB. That was fantastic. Um, not for you, but no that ep 
That sucked, dude. Now, some of the ranch stuck to the bottom, but it is gone. Okay. Six K range. I'm sweating. <clears throat> okay, there are a lot of other names in the seven K range, by the way, that I think I'm definitely going to want to talk about in the Nut Heart come Wednesday. Oh my god, I feel disgusting right now. Yeah, I think you could. Um, this seven K range is is fantastic. <sighs> I think there that's that's where you're gonna make or break a lot of lineups this week. There's a lot of good players down in there. So, um, and that's you know. Here's the thing. You look at stats, you look at form, you look at history and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of these players, you can go with some gut and just, you know, and just you're probably going to get them low owned. And Can we not say I gut? Huh? Yeah, I say gut. Can we not say gut, gut you, anymore? Like you're, yeah. <sighs> all right. So I will start with the 6K range since DB is maybe about to throw up. I don't know. I'm going to go. I came uh, really close. I'm going to really go with close. Brendan Todd up there at the top at 6,900. You know, a guy who played extremely well at the Travelers until he just had a few blow-up holes on the back nine and finished T11 with the T57 at the Rocket Mortgage. I like him here. I mean, he he's we haven't seen him play uh, Muirfield in a while, but, again, that was because he went through all those struggles. But he did, it like, back in 2015 when he was as good of a golfer as he is now, he finished 17th. Um, so I think Brennan Todd is a really good play at 6,900. Definitely checks the box in, um, hmm. you almost made, I just thought about the ranch shot for a second. when to throw up. Dude, it was way uh, worse anyway, than I thought it was going to be. Uh, checks the box down here, relatively considering and strokes gain approach. He's, uh, 26 in the field in proximity. He is number one in driving accuracy, 35th in greens and regulation, 32nd in bogey avoidance. I like Brendan Todd at sixty nine hundred. I think he could be uh, he could be like up in that seven thousand range, and we're getting him at sixty nine hundred. So I'm a fan of him. A cheaper play, a guy that like I just feel like goes under the radar every single week. But at sixty six hundred, Troy Merritt has been God. playing. That almost makes in- me throw up more than the ranch water. Look, Troy Merritt has been playing extremely well. Twenty second last week. T8 at the Rocket Mortgage, T60 at the Travelers, T70 at the Heritage. Okay, so fine. Playing but, well the last two weeks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're getting them at 6,600. I mean, all you really need is you want to you want to make the cut with a lot of birdies, maybe and some eagles or whatever. I don't know, but I think it, not uh, too much to ask for old Troy Merritt. I mean, he's a stud. Well, I mean, it's <sighs> 6,600. I'm not trying to get him to you know finish top 10 and but or maybe even top 25 or top 30 but guess what he finished 17th here last year so i think troy Merritt's a pretty good play at 6600 for a guy that's you know playing well right now that has good course history here and that is going to have extreme low ownership i'm all about it i think i have a fever i think that anyway, ranch gave ahead. me a What's fever your, let's just you is just that all you have 6600 yeah that's all i got all right, I'm going quick here. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm going back to the well with Nick Taylor. He 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 sucked after day one, but he almost hit the first round leader bet. Well, no, he didn't because Morikawa Callow went ballistic, but he came out firing on Thursday. I'm going to Nick Taylor. I'm going Emiliano Grillo for the first time in God hmm. knows how long. He'll probably I screw actually me. like that play. He was on my list. I didn't talk yeah. about him, but he. I'm yeah. going Chesticle, Ches Revy. I, this is like team short knocker accurate as as all get out in the six case, uh, because I I think I'm thinking cut maker not volatile. You know you got to think so a higher though, higher percentage of people making the cuts here. Okay, so even though he hasn't made the last three cuts, like for karma purposes, because you just had to take a ranch water shot that was <laughs> like the information of when like of what a ranch water shot came from Ryan Moore's caddy. Are you not going to play any Ryan Moore? I, I may play Ryan Moore. I actually have him written down. I do have him written down, but I will wait until Swedberg tells us what to do. Uh, that's what I'll do. Um, but I'm, I'm going Nick Taylor, Grillo, Shez, Norlander again, going right back to Norlander. We've been on him for weeks now. And then I'm going to give you a super, super cheap, super cheap play. Whew, hold on. I got to like scroll. This, wait. This is – I feel like this is the ranch water getting to you now. 
<laughs> I got to scroll all the way down to $6,100. Oh, my good Lord. 6100 But he just finished 17th at the workday. Stuart W. Sink. I don't know if his middle name is W. It starts with a W, but I just felt like it sounded right. Stuart Sink all of a sudden got on these familiar Mirfield greens and he gained six strokes with the putter, three strokes on, on around the greens. He actually gained strokes off the tee, which is stupid. That's how stupid accurate he is. Stuart Sink still has the occasional top 20 in the tank. And at 61 hunch, that is, that is, that is Mui, Mui Bueno for a guy who loves him some Mirfield village. Um, so I think that, I I mean, you think about it since the restart, I mean, he's, you know, made two of three cuts. So, yeah, I mean, he's made four of the last five cuts in at the, at Mirfield at Jack's tournament. And that's not actually five of the last six. If you count last week, if you count work day. So it's $6,100. Like I'll take a gamble on a little Stewart sink in tournaments. Okay. 